Hi everyone, it's Vanessa. I'm here to share with you the books that I ended up reading in the month of July. I have a stack, I think, of 11 books to talk about. And there's kind of a mix here of uh, nonfiction, graphic novels, and kids books. The first one that I want to talk about is Off the Edge by Kelly Wheel. I listened to this one through the Libro FM Advanced Listeners Copy program. I like this, but I didn't love it. I ended up giving it three stars. I didn't know going into it that I was going to focus so much on flat earth and people who believe in flat earth conspiracy theories. I thought it was going to be a more general look at conspiracy theories. The people that we were learning about here didn't make me feel for them. There is one little section here where she really talks about, you know, what this does to the people who believe these things and the people around them that I did think was really touching. It's this person that she does get to know. For the most part, a lot of the other people who are featured in this book are just people that are not easy to understand their beliefs. It also goes a lot into the history of flat earth conspiracy theories and like where it came from and how it's really had a resurgence here in the United States in the past like 10-ish years. The author really talks about how the algorithm created this monster on YouTube where it really ramped up how many people were watching these kinds of videos about flat earth. I wanted to read this as a follow-up to the Sandy Hook book that I read recently and I wanted this to be kind of like a precursor or like an understanding of it more generally but it really is only focused on flat earth. A book that I did really love was Hakim's Odyssey. The next few books are all graphic novels that I read while I was in Texas visiting family. This one is one that I read in the car basically in one sitting. I could not stop reading it. I had never heard about this until I saw it on a list about, you know, refugee graphic memoirs. This is one that traces this man leaving Syria. And in this first book, he goes from Syria to Lebanon to Jordan to Turkey, and that's where it ends. If you see on the back, there's this map that kind of traces everywhere that he went. And this map really fascinated me when I looked at it. And just thinking of like how much happened in this first book and like that it's not over. I immediately got the second book, so now I have the second book to read as well. What I really loved about this book too is how relatable the main subject that we're following, Hakim, is. He comes across as someone who has beliefs that, you know, this is unjust, but he also is nervous and also feels like it's not his place to be so outspoken about how he disagrees with his government. This is in sharp contrast to his brother and other people that are surrounding him in his neighborhood. But I related to him because I feel like I'm like him, I'm not a fighter, and and I really, really enjoyed this. I think it went by really quickly and I loved my time with it. So I definitely recommend it. After that, I read Miss Ginses. Um, this is by Kat Fajardo. This is a graphic novel from the perspective of a girl who goes back to, I believe it's Honduras, to visit her family there, including her grandmother and like extended family. She doesn't want to go back. She wants to just spend time with her friends in the States. And her mom doesn't want her to. Her mom wants her to go back and wants her to have like a full quinceanera. She is not the kind of girly girl that would like a quinceanera. She seems like someone who is more tomboyish and likes to wear all black. That's something that's really a point in this book. And this ended up being really, really touching. I loved the family exploration in here. I love graphic novels about families and about girls who are kind of coming of age and understanding their place in the world. Wanting to rebel, but also understanding traditions and understanding like sacrifices made by your family. I recommend if you like kids graphic novels, I really enjoyed my time with it. Then I read Swim Team, which I enjoyed but I didn't love as much as I thought I was going to. There are kind of like strange plot choices in this book and like plot holes a little bit that I don't think kids would notice or anything like that but I kind of did and I just didn't understand why some things happened the way that they did. I think what makes this book really amazing is the focus on the history of black people swimming in public pools in America. In this book we are following a girl who moves to Florida and there's this big swim team in her new school. She is kind of forced to take swimming as a PE credit and then she joins the swimming team. She moves into this like apartment complex where um, one of her neighbors used to be a swimmer at that school and she was very very good and then this woman teaches this main character how to swim. There's like rivalry between this public school and a private school that's there as well. Friendship dynamics and her and her father also um, kind of feeling like they're parting ways as they're moving to this new place. So I did quite enjoy this. I didn't love it. Like I thought it was going to be a five star like Newberry contender. Then the book that I read after that is one I don't have because everybody and their mother would like to read it and that's Book Lovers by Emily Henry. I enjoyed my time with this book. I thought that it was going to basically be as 
as good as Beach Read. I think ultimately as I close the book, I think Beach Read is my favorite Emily Henry that I've read so far. Still haven't read People We Meet on Vacation yet, but this was kind of a lighthearted thing that I wanted to read on vacation. It definitely satisfied the things that I was looking for. I really enjoyed the banter and the romance between Charlie and Nora, and definitely I just wanted the book to be about Charlie and Nora and not so much about the sisters together. I didn't really enjoy the way that the sister was narrated. I think she came across like really immature even though she had like three children and I think that just had to do with the narration which is interesting because it was by Julia Whalen and everybody loves Julia Whalen including myself but I did enjoy everything having to do with Nora and Charlie for sure. I just wanted to be in their world a little bit longer. I really enjoyed how the book ended. After that I read Maya and the Robot by Eve L. Ewing and this book I read for something that I'm doing at work. I really enjoyed it. It was definitely a lot more like social justice topics than I anticipated. I, I went into this book really thinking it was going to be a steam read, like we're just following this girl who finds this robot and like learns how to work it to have it do chores for her and things like that. And she participates in like a science fair and wants to win, you know, first prize and things don't go according to plan. There's definitely like other conversations here for sure though. I really loved the way that the community and the neighborhood came through in this book. Everybody in the community is different from each other, but they really come together and help each other out. And I just found that really, really lovely. They all like leaned on each other. I didn't anticipate kind of discussions in here about gender and also discussions in here about gun violence. Like those were kind of unexpected things that happened in this story. I feel like it is something that this age group should be kind of exposed to. I really loved all of the stuff with the robots. I thought he was really fun and I really enjoyed seeing the main character understand she's not truly lonely in this world even though she has moments of feeling lonely. Also knowing her potential as a scientist. I thought that that was also really well displayed in this story. Then I did a reread of New Kid and I really enjoyed reading this back again. I had forgotten so many things about it and I think I, I really like plowed my way through this one really quickly this time. I feel like last time it took me a couple days to read. This time I read it in like one sitting. I really forgot so many things in the story, especially like how Drew comes across. He doesn't come across super great and I'm so glad that he was able to be featured in the next book, Class A act that Jerry Craft put together about Drew, more, more focused on Drew because I feel like you understand him more as a three-dimensional character in that story. I did really enjoy Jordan and his family again in this story and if you don't know that much about it, it's basically a kid who goes to a school that has a really good reputation and it's a lot about microaggressions that kids who are not white face um, but there's also a lot of humor and like video games and like boys being boys, getting to know each other and having insight jokes with each other that is also a really nice uh, part of the story as well. After that I read Bodies on the Line by Lauren Rankin. This is at the front lines of the fight to protect abortion in America. Overall I thought this book was good but I didn't love it. I think I ended up giving it three and a half stars. It's a book that really I feel like could have been more personal because it starts with the author talking about her experience as an abortion escort as she is getting people inside the building. It also is a little bit about the history of abortion escorting in America and it's talking a lot about what the status of that is in maybe like 2015 to 2018. That's kind of like the time that she is mostly writing this book. A lot of it is written to with the belief that Roe v. Wade was going to fall. So I did definitely learn a lot of valuable information in here especially about how you know places like Alabama and Mississippi and Kentucky are working through helping people get the care that they need. What they believe that the fight is going to continue to be after Roe v. Wade falls. Abortion was already very, very difficult to seek in states like that. Now I think that it's mostly like abortion funds is what they're really focusing their time on. But it is fascinating to see this from the perspective of someone who's actually doing this work and to kind of learn a little bit of the history of it as well. I think this was a little bit too repetitive at times. The author really focuses on the same like facts and stories and information over and over again through the chapters, which which did make it seem a little bit like, okay, yeah, I've heard this before. It's kind of a pet peeve of mine in nonfiction when um, you're basically using your, the same argument over and over again. I think it makes your argument less compelling. After that, I read a book that I gave five stars to and probably the third five star read of this year. I have not read that many. Maybe the second five star read, honestly. And that's Trailed, One Woman's Quest to Solve the Shenandoah Murders by Catherine Miles. This book really took over me for like the two to three days that I was reading it. I was so engaged in 
in this. I was looking things up online that she was referencing. I was looking up pictures of the people involved. It's a story that I think is right up my alley. I don't necessarily think that it's a story for everyone but it's a non-fiction story that really captivates me uh, i love following people who are kind of investigating cold cases or things that people have kind of forgotten about my favorite thing in these kinds of books is that we put so much focus on the victim that is what i love i love learning about the person and i love learning about the person through the eyes of their family members and friends because it is a life lost instead of so much focusing on the perpetrator and you know how they did this i also really love the author's perspective she is very compassionate and she really is thinking about the families and the victims as she is writing this she's second guessing herself a lot of the time and like following up with the family members to see like is this okay i just found her like someone who's very caring and someone who I related to, the anxiety that she felt and the feeling of honestly like nobody is safe, especially women, especially women in the outdoors. So this book is a true crime narrative nonfiction story about a woman who is reinvestigating or looking into an unsolved case from 1996 where two women who were a lesbian couple who were camping outdoors um, in the Shenandoah National Park were killed. They think they know who did it but the author is really like looking back at all the evidence that was collected and interviewing all the investigators, uh, you know, law enforcement that were involved in the case and kind of looking at all the evidence once again. And she really comes up with some new theories, some that are really honestly pretty convincing. It also had a really interesting history about women in wilderness and how women were never like allowed outdoors and how even in the 90s it was something that was kind of different so i really really enjoyed this book i don't think i'm doing it justice honestly but if you enjoy true crime books if you enjoy books that focus on the victims and their lives and also you like to see kind of justice served or like people who are trying to seek justice i think that you would love this book as well i really love the audiobook experience of it and i really really recommend this book i have not felt about a book you know a true crime book like this since a false report which is a book that I read you know like four years ago at this point and it's probably like one of my favorite nonfiction books that I've ever read so this is very similar to that in that you are sussing out that evidence once again also just the compassion coming through in the cases and the people who are investigating those cases after that I read a book I didn't love that much and that's the moon within this book I've had out for a while honestly and um, it's kind of been on my shelf it doesn't have an audiobook I didn't love it that much as much as I love land of the cranes which is the other book that I read by this author it's also a book in verse like land of the cranes but this and focuses on the main character getting her period for the first time and in the culture that she's a part of her family wants her to have like a moon ceremony to mark this new you know part into womanhood basically a lot of this book honestly focused on the mother and the daughter's really contentious relationship with each other which i didn't love as much i i really wanted them to like each other more and i also didn't love how much the main character's love life and like romantic interests with this new boy kind of took center stage. Overall, I just felt like this was off. I wasn't excited to pick it up. It took me days and days to finish it. I feel like part of that is because there's no audiobook, but also just the story in general was not something that I was super, super invested in. After that, I read a book that I enjoyed, and that is We Carry Their Bones. I mean, as much as you can enjoy a book about this, but I feel like it was pretty much well done, and what I what I was anticipating out of this. This is The Search for Justice at a Dozier School for Boys by Aaron Kimmerly. This book is by the anthropologist that was at the head of digging up the areas where the school was where they found dozens and dozens of graves shallow graves made for uh, boys that were at this school. This school is created for disciplinary reasons. The kids who were there were mostly kids who were running away from home or like were being sought for truancy and not going to school and things like that. Like really low level minor things but the things that they did to these boys as punishment at this school were really horrific and it's been kind of understood in this town that this is something that happened but the people in the town don't want to know really the nitty-gritty of what happened. The anthropologist from University of South Florida was at the head of uncovering all of these graves and trying to put a name to all of these bodies that were found. Also finding the people who did survive this, so a lot of the boys who had stories to tell. I think this book might not be for a lot of people because of how 
at times clinical and dry it is. I think the, you know, academicness of the author comes through in that sense where it's not a book that I felt um, really emotionally invested in. I learned a lot about anthropology and, you know, also a lot about like the politics between, you know, getting grants and getting permission to do all of these things and how she really had to get involved with the politicians in Florida, which is its own like whole thing. I just don't think that she's a historian. I don't think she's a journalist. I don't think that that's what really makes her excited. What makes her excited is like the techniques and the, you know, actual digging of these bones and learning more about like what happened to these kids based on what remains of them in these graves, um, more so than like the personal stories um, about what happened to them. We do learn about the history of the school and some of the kids who were there that are now like adults into their 60s and 70s. For the fact that I learned so much about what it's like to do the kind of work. I did enjoy my time with it. I do recommend it. It's a nice short read that really explains and teaches you a lot. The last book I finished is A Duet for Home by Karina Yang Glazer, a book that I liked but I didn't love. I gave three stars. Yet another middle grade book that I have just read and it's been fine but it hasn't really, you know, made my middle grade heart be happy. This book focuses on a family who moves into a homeless shelter in New York, getting used to the new place and what that means, hiding aspects of their lives from the kids at their school, it does deal a lot with music, you know, the kind of refuge music provides for some of them, as well as like standing up to politicians in the town about new policies that are being implemented uh, regarding homelessness. I really enjoyed the characters in the story. I thought that they were great. I did think the ending was a little bit too unbelievable, like the things that happened. It's really easy to cheer and root for them. Um, but overall, I just thought that this was good, but I didn't necessarily like love it, love it. So that is it for all the books that I've read. I hope that you enjoyed watching this video. If you've read any of these or would like to read any of these, not that you've heard me talk about them let me know down below and i'll see you in my next video bye bye